coming back to you uh, mr parmeshwaran uh, i think uh, your your experience uh, you know uh, is is vast in the sense not only pharmaceuticals but otc fmcg and several other industries uh, you know is is what what you are touched while while uh, working on uh, big brands and big businesses you know uh, so specifically any examples that you would like to quote or specifically any learnings that you would like to share uh, in the in the context of data to insights as a journey and also uh, i understand that uh, you have been working on several tools and techniques uh, on the consumer behavior and how do we sort of you know get that data and uh, you know put those all the broken pieces together and create insights out of it so some of those processes or the tools if you want to sort of you know uh, briefly describe for the benefit of the audience then that would be great over to you mr parmeshwar yeah so thank you so you know i think uh, uh, sudarshan has laid a nice framework which is try and define the problem don't define the solution so define the problem then look at data convert the data into information and then into insights and then arrive at the solution it's quite possible that when you define the problem you may have a solution right but then if you present it to the whole team that becomes the one solution everyone starts chasing that solution right so the ideal thing is to hold it back even if you are pretty convinced that is a solution hold it back definitely generate two or three more alternative scenarios and then you go and start looking for so let me uh, talk about a brand which you know we helped to launch in india a brand called tropicana uh, which was originally with seagram then it moved to to pepsi and tropicana was very clear that they wanted to launch uh, a drink without any sugar without any color without any additive without any i think basically some natural preservatives or whatever so when we tasted the product we were also so not very sure whether indian consumers will like it so we did fairly deep immersion with consumers you know got i remember we conducted some groups where a colleague of ours had taken flasks filled with the roadside uh, you know the orange juice from the roadside guy uh, tropicana and there was a big brand called uh, orange juice at that time and another brand called real we had taken all the four and given it to these people and started talking and then we realized that one of the insights which came from there was all indians i'm talking about a story which is probably 15 20 years ago but all indians want to be healthy but don't want to take the trouble to you know trouble to stay healthy so they want to be healthy but they will not go for a walk in the morning they will not do yoga they will not do anything so what we did was we we re, we positioned this brand from there we got the insight that we need to sell this on health as an easy way of health so we positioned tropicana as the taste of good health so almost to say that this is not very tasty because it is very healthy and the whole advertising campaign was this is the taste of good health it doesn't contain sugar it doesn't contain additives it doesn't contain color and and that ended up you know the tropicana that particular campaign we launched ended up you know making tropicana the number one orange juice in the country going ahead of you know real and going ahead of uh, orange juice etc it was based on initially we were worried will we be will anyone even buy this product it was also premium by the way it was 50% more expensive than orange juice will you be able to sell this product but but since we went to the consumer with an open mind and we didn't have any specific agenda we just had a problem that you know how do you get consumers to accept this product and then we got the insight that position it as the real the taste of good health right so that very different uh, we wouldn't have done that if we had not gone and done fairly you know fairly deep uh, consumer immersion uh, another brand which i worked for a long period the brand called santur which is a soap brand sandal and turmeric it originally we launched as a sandal and turmeric soap and then it came uh, to ulka uh, we repositioned it as a younger looking uh, skin and this whole i uh, think about a mistaken age but even this was not an easy journey right after 3 4 years that mistaken age campaign stopped working so there was a huge debate within the agency and the client was convinced that maybe the campaign should change but then again immersion with consumers revealed that 
the promise of younger looking skin the promise of being mistaken for someone younger is a promise which is very valid indian women may change but everyone wants to look young but our way our, the way we were telling our story was becoming too stale so we changed the story from just showing shaadi and more shaadi and more shaadi we took the the santur woman out we took her to a gym we took her to a to a to aerobics uh, class we took her to a hula hoop class we made her a fashion designer we made her a photographer we made her a pilot and then as they say rest is history so a brand i mean when the campaign started 93 94 uh, santur was not even 20% of the size of lux right but last year santur became bigger than lux you know was there any miracle no and what i talked about right short term and long term the clear focus that i will keep tracking how my consumer is changing and i will change my communication i change my offering in tune with my consumers change so again focusing on consumers focusing on insights and keep retuning you know retuning your your brand message uh, let's also look at a, a look at a few other examples of been outstanding successes right one is you know the whole idea of masala oats now masala oats is something unique to india now oats as a category the manufacturers figured out that in india people will not pour and have something in the morning which is cold and soggy right they wanted something which was hot and spicy and therefore they innovated and they created this whole category called masala oats right and it turned out to be a to be an outstanding success you know i mean a quaker safola all of them have created a i i would suspect that masala oats as a category is probably become bigger than then conflicts in this country and conflicts had a 20 year lead over oats in this country they they got that right because they went and they got the consumer insight and they created new and i keep talking about this you know understanding consumers understanding your dna innovation so they innovated they innovated and they looked at both short term and long term so that's another interesting you know interesting example of how a brand was able to understand changing consumers innovated and created a better brand you know connect with the consumers now when you come to uh, otc and let me talk of us an example which you know sudarshan and i worked with uh, on a brand called burnall uh, and you know and and the burnall sales was virtually flat for many many years and Uh, and the brand was iconic it's it's actually its status is so iconic it's a very small brand it it was a small brand i think it's even smaller today but but it had a very iconic status right but the problem was we said look but why is our sales not growing and then we did we did some interesting research where we got the research agency to actually ask the consumer uh that what do you use for a burn 95% of the consumers say we use burnall okay if you are a classical research person you are stopped there but you know both sudarshan and i are as you know are somewhat different so we asked the research agency ask the consumer to show it your tube of burnall so while 95% of the people say they put burnall for burns and when they claim do you have burnall at home 90% say they have burnall at home but only less than half of them can show a tube of burnall which means there is no burnall at home right so that led actually to a very clear sharp focused campaign saying you know burnall ghar pe nahi hai and that i'm you know uh, told that gave a almost a 20% flip to the brand very simple right nothing very complicated but the idea was that can we ask the consumer to show the tube of burnall and when you ask the consumer to show it your burnall they can't find it which means the burnall is not there if the burnall is not there when there is a burn you will not apply burnall right and therefore you have a missed opportunity right you will probably put something else and, and burnall misses the opportunity so that was that was i think a clear brand problem which got solved by going to consumers getting the data converting it to in, you know information and then getting it to insight 
and in fact after that insight the advertising almost wrote itself you know we didn't have to struggle at all so this is the whole thing right you how do you how do you how do you define your problem and then where do you go looking for data how do you collect that data how do you then convert it into information and then into insight and then into action so all these successes whether it is you know i spoke earlier about oreo right oreo is a 100 year old brand and that article says that on oreo after many years they they innovated they started having fun with the brand right they started creating the white oreo they started creating the multi layered oreo they created what is called a mini oreo right and the brand okay the point is the mini oreo did not sell very much but mini oreo put energy back into the old oreo and old oreo started growing which is why you know vijay vishwanath professor howard wrote this that look there are no tired brands there are only tired brand managers so if you are hungry enough to make your brand grow then you got to go with an open mind and look for data with converted information and then into insight and then use that insight to power your brand ahead right whichever is the brand whether it is a in that time when we started working on santur it is a, it is a very young brand today it is more than i think 30 35 years old uh, you know whether it is a young brand tropicana was a very young brand in india right oreo is a very old brand whether it is a young brand old brand there is always an opportunity for you to grow the brand franchise as long as you are clear that i will not go with assumptions i will go look at consumers i will study consumers and i will pull that data out convert it to information and insight whether it is you know i remember we worked on a on a on a on a you know crayon brand called faber castell now how do you get insight for faber i mean how do you get insight for crayons uh, we organized children's drawing party right and we got 10 children in the same building to come and have fun with the crayons and that gave the idea seeing so, you, know, you know crayons are such high involvement for the kids that they know this is you know faber castell ka gold is different from camlin's gold is different from stedler's gold that's a level and that led to a uh, to an insight which led to a campaign which worked very well for the brand so don't go with assumptions go with problems and you will be able to find a solution for a problem right so back to oh, you sharing yeah great great i think all all the all the five or six examples that you gave were, were really simply fabulous and i think one common link or common thread i could see is is the uh, you know uh, aspiration to understand the consumer better and better and better and never stop what you know about the consumer and also i think uh, you know uh, actually observing the behavior of the consumer while the consumer is consuming the product like the last example that we talked about is also probably gives you a lot more insights Uh, as compared to only uh, you know pure uh, you know conversational uh, kind of interview kind of a technique like you know so so of course depending upon the category one will have to choose what technique but i think um, consumer insights is the real key uh, i'll also like to relate with while while every example will have one relationship with even the in pharma what we do and what we could do i think santur example because that's a dilemma which is faced by every brand manager at some point of time that you know that there is a pushback from sometimes customers field force saying that you know this has become old now stale what what you said like you know but i think important point is that uh, the core message the core position in the core what your brand stands for that i think uh, you know sticking with that in case of santur uh, you might change the context you might change the color scheme you might change the models you might change you know the look and feel and all that but at the end of the day the brand promise what it stood for i think that that continued i think probably that could be one of the one of the important reason of success so maybe for a brand manager i think uh, you know while while he will get pushed or she will get pushed for for something new to be delivered every time uh, i think uh, how do we stick to the core and then rest of the packaging you can definitely you know you can change articulation you can change i think that's a one very important message from the santur example uh, so gentlemen thanks for, for for your time it was a wonderful conversation uh, both of you and uh, very different points that you got but i think uh, learning about the consumers Uh, data to insights of the journey i'm sure brand managers would be in a position to pick up a few points which are relevant for their own brands and for their own therapies 
and hence it would be worth uh, watching this uh, video uh, as as we release it so thanks once again and uh, we wish you great 2021 and hopefully we'll be out of uh, the pandemic situation as we enter into 2021 thank you